Prices. Yeah, yeah. Order, and I call the member for Goldstone. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and it's wonderful to be able to get up and respond to this important motion from the member for Bowman, because, like he, I am concerned about those most vulnerable in the community and also concerned about making sure we provide the support and assistance that those people, particularly with a disability, get the care, the support and the assistance they need. But we also need to be honest about the pathway to do so. We just heard from the previous speaker about how we shouldn't be concerned about things like dollars and cents. Well, I can understand from an opposition that didn't fund the NDIS why they would take so little interest. They judge a policy not by its outcomes, seemingly not even whether it's funded, but simply by their good wishes and intent. And the tragedy of that, Deputy Speaker, is it might give them good political selling points to their constituents. It might create a narrative or an argument that they can give in their social media videos of speeches they give in the Federation Chamber. But it doesn't reflect the lived reality of many people with a disability in our community who so desperately need not just the rhetoric of support, but the financial resources of that support. And what stays an eternal shame and a stain on the legacy of this opposition is that when they left government last, they made a promise to people with a disability, a disability in this country, made a promise of what they would deliver, but never delivered the funding to do so. That is an eternal stain on their legacy and rings hollow on their commitment to what it is that they want to do. Now, I understand that some members are interjecting because awful truths, when reflected up through a mirror, it is a difficult and ugly image to look back to. But such is the way of things. And our government, our role as a government, is to correct the error of their ways, to find a pathway forward that's sustainable for people with a disability in Australia who, who desperately need the assistance and support of the NDIS so that we can do so. And those are the challenges that we have confronted. Since the 30th of June 2016, the number of people who have relied on the NDIS has grown from 30,000 to 300,000. The rollout of one of the biggest social welfare reforms in this nation's history across a continent. And I have to say, sadly, Deputy Speaker, while so many of the states have not taken the opportunity to rise to the challenge and show their compassion, their empathy and their financial support to those people as well, but they saw it as an opportunity for retreat. And we have had to fill in every gap, but also make sure that we do so while we also protect those most vulnerable and also protect and respect the contribution of Australian taxpayers. Because, of course, what we've seen is a massive growth in the number of service providers from 3,500 to 20,000 over the same period. And nothing Australians want more is for them to be able to provide the support and assistance for people with a disability, and that is true. But there is nothing that will destroy their confidence and support for such programs than if they see service providers profiteer in a malicious way or rip people off with a disability who are vulnerable who can't otherwise support themselves. And that's why we've been prudent and responsible in the way we have implemented the NDIS. Why there has been so much shame at many of the states that have seen as an opportunity to cost cut and retreat as the federal government has in, in, uh, entered into the space. But it's to make sure that those pricing structures keep meeting the expectations of many of the service providers who are so dependent on the NDIS, and that's the point of this motion. It's not just that we judge a policy by its intent, but we judge it by its outcomes and the government's preparedness to back that up with secure financial resources. And I speak to groups in the Goldstein electorate often, like Bailey House under the leadership of Warwick Kavanagh and Marriott Support Services under Janine Simpkins. And each one of them works day in, day out to improve the lives of people with a disability so they can live with purpose and dignity. And what we owe those people in this place 
is honesty and the truth. And that is what this government is delivering. And